hands, he comes to minister. <laughs> We want to thank the Lord for another opportunity to be able to stand and proclaim the Word of God. You know, we ain't got nothing else to go by, Brother Bo, but the Word of God. If we try to go any other way, he said we are as a thief and a, we are a thief and a robber. The same is a thief and a robber. If we try to go any other way besides Jesus, and I want you to listen real good tonight. We, uh, as we go through this, it's going to be quite a bit of scriptures. You can go with me if you want to, or you can write them down, whatever you want to do. But I want you to take them to heart this evening because it is very important what I'm going to speak on, teach on, preach on, whatever, however you want to call it. But it's important for the body of Christ, and the Lord's had this on my heart, and I've been studying, and I've been looking up this and that, and I've been in debates, and I've been, and I've just... I just want to know that I know, don't you? Amen. All right, praise the Lord. And I wouldn't be up here and standing with it if I wasn't for sure that I know. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost will let you know, won't he? He's a good God tonight. But we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 9 to start with at verse 6. And uh, it's just a good place to be, ain't it, Sister Rachel? I'm glad, and you know, I don't know who's in here tonight that may be in a, have you ever tried to change your message? Mm -hmm. Won't work. No more. And I don't know who in here tonight that is in a valley of decision or in, in a place that we're, I don't know, but I just, I hope tonight will help you. I really do, to make a choice, to make a decision to do something in your life to better yourself. And, oh, I got a little comment on the music. If you want your kids to change their music coming out of their mouth, change it what goes in their ears. Amen. 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 And who Blake Shelton don't work no more going down the road, Amen. Sister Rachel. Amen. It don't. It don't work no more. I don't know if you like him or not, but that's just a name I thought of. I ain't listened to it in years, but I just thought of that name. But it don't work no more. And if you want it to stop coming out of their mouth and embarrassing you in public, then you got to change what goes in their ears. Amen. Amen. you got to do that. Good, and remember, you're the parents. Not them. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right. Chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 reads like this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You can give the Lord a hand clap and be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. This is simply going to be called Jesus' name. Jesus' name. All right. How many loves Jesus' name? How many knows that's the name above all names? He's a good God, ain't he? We love you tonight, and you know, there have been some things spoke of tonight, and you know, you want to have answers for people when they come to you, and I want you to go to John chapter 5, verse 43, those that wants to go. Pay attention all that you can. Follow along all that you can. There's a question out there, who is the Father? It's been asked tonight, it's been asked in all denominations, and all this and that that's out there in the world, but we're here tonight to know who the Father is. And the Bible says in John chapter 5, verse 43, Jesus said in red, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. All right, church, what's the Father's name? Jesus. He said, I come in my Father's name. His name is Jesus. All right, go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. There's a question, but it's already been answered, but we've got to go to it. It says, the name of the Son. We want to know who the name of the Son is, Brother Ralph. 
Matthew 1 and 21 plainly states, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. How many knows the son's name? Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right. Now it's a little harder to convince people of this one. But we got something. The name of the Holy Ghost. Go to John chapter 14 and 26. John 14 and 26. If you need me to slow down, I'll slow down. I want you to get this. If you are in confusion about this, I want you to get this tonight. John 14 and 26. We've got three separate places to go to for this one. I want you to really know. Really know. John 14 and 26 first. It says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. Now what's the Holy Ghost's name? Jesus. He said he'll send it to you in my name, didn't he? Go to 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. Thank you, Jesus. Are we the New Testament church? Amen, ain't we? Thank you, Jesus. 12 and 3. It says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God. No man that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now go to 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. Who is the Lord, church? Jesus. Jesus. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17 says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, if the Lord is that Spirit, and His name's Jesus, we've covered it. It's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost's name is Jesus. Amen. We agree on that tonight. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, how many knows that He brought salvation? Amen. That His name brought salvation. Yes. All right. Go to Acts 4 and 12. Go to Acts 4 and 12. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Acts 4 and 12. Yeah. Come on tonight. Now, listen, they're sitting in churches all over America confused, Sister Rachel. Come Amen. On. They're, but they're still going to church. I oblige them for that. Yeah. They're still going. Yes. But there's one day I was sitting in a Methodist church. I've been taught the other ways. But one day I had to start reading the Bible. Yeah. And I read a passage to where he told me to start seeking out the old path and walk therein. Man, that something led me to Acts. He showed me where the old path was. But the old path in the New Testament. The old path in the New Testament. Come on. Listen to this. It says Acts 4 and 12 reads like this. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh -huh. What name was he talking about? Jesus. The name Jesus. of Jesus. Amen. The name that come, praise be to God, from up on high. The same one in Isaiah 9 and 6. For his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His name is still Jesus. But they'll call his name Wonderful. They'll call his name Counselor. They'll call his name Prince of Peace. They'll call his name Everlasting Father. They'll call his name the Mighty God. That's the name of Jesus. Then we're still on the Jesus name subject here. That is the name of sal what salvation mean? Deliverance. Deliverance. So the deliverance comes what? In Jesus name. When we speak Jesus name over anything, that's when deliverance comes. That's what it comes. Now I want you to go to Matthew 28 and 16. Teach us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's the first of a new year. Let's get refreshed. Let's, let's know what we're doing. 
I've heard people say, I wish I knowed how to answer them. And I was one of them. But you know what you got to do? You got to keep going back reading it. Going over it. Studying it. Getting deeper in it. Staying in it. Don't leave it just because you get tore up a little bit. Don't leave it. Keep going back to it. Know Him. You'll know Him by the Spirit. It says, 28 and 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw Him, they worshipped Him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He placed commanded you. Did you hear that? Commanded you. Whatever so I have commanded you. Go to Mark 16, 14. Listen tonight. Listen. It's pretty, ain't it? The Bible's ruffling. People getting the word. Growing. Listen here. I want you to know how to start. That's the way you end up where the finish line is. In the right place. There's a lot of people going to end up in the wrong place at the finish line. And they're going to turn around and see what's wrong. And they're going to look and that piece of that foundation is going to be gone. And they're going, and it'll be pointed out, there it is. It was in my name. Praise the Lord. 16 and 14. I've got to turn that page. You're excited. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven. As they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these things shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if any, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now listen there. It says, He that believeth and is baptized. Written in red. How many believe you got to be baptized? Amen. Jesus said it. Do you believe it? Amen. 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 Go to Luke 24 and 45. Luke 24 and 45. I don't believe in notes, preacher. Don't let you teach or use them either then. Same anointing. Come on. Come on. Come on. They got these denominations. If you use notes, you ain't got it. It's the truth. I was told that one time. Amen. Listen to this. It says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to raise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in, the name, in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from upon high. And he led them out as far as Beth to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass that while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. See, when I was reading into this, when I was when I was reading, I had a problem with people worshiping Jesus there. When God said in the Old Testament that He yeah. was only one God. Come on. 
that he'd give his share his glory with another. He wouldn't. He said, I'll not share my, I'm sharing my glory with another. So if this man that walked the shores of Galilee that they said right here that they worshipped him was not God, then who was he? That's right. He was God in the flesh. Amen. And they worshipped him. They had every right to worship him as well as they did as well as they did back back way back in Moses' times and all that. Why? Because he was God come in the flesh. Wrapped himself, give himself a name that was above every name. That at this name of Jesus. Listen tonight. Listen. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We've got to go through with this. Go to Acts chapter 2. Go to 1. Thank you, Lord. I've got to show you this. I've got to show you this. See, people, you, you want to think that this was a long time away, that the end of these Gospels was a long time away from the time that Acts came. But it wasn't. People want to say that the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was a long time. Then here they come. I've even had people tell me, well, the apostles straightened up after a while and they did it the right way. But it, it wasn't very long, Brother Jeff, that they was come over and here, here it is in Acts. The same camps that was happening right there. He just continued on. Says the, uh, uh, Acts chapter 1 says, The former treaties have I made, O Philopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he threw the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles. I read that in Acts. That was after that. He said he gave these commandments to the apostles. This was after that. Right here. It says, To whom also he showed himself alive, after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall... But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. It wasn't very long after that they was there staying. This is the same count at the end of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Same time right here in Acts. It's just going on. Listen. The, it, it is. I won't say that because there's something. Thank you, Lord. All right. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter two. We're just going. To, we're going to go through the, uh, the, the. This was the, the Pentecost is fifty days. That's what it means. Fifty days. So we know that it was fifty days. That ain't very long, is it? Fifty days. Here there was in the upper room, and the Bible teaches us that. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. This is verse two, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. It says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling, listen, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. What did He command them to do? He said, Go teach. And have them to observe all things that I've said unto you. Yes. Didn't he? Yes. Listen now. This is, this is important to us. Our foundation and how we get started in the walk of Jesus. If you're at least a bit worried about your soul, your kids, the people around you, you'll be listening to me tonight. It is very important. This is how we get started in this. And hear, this hear the Holy Ghost coming. They spoke in tongues. This all happened right there in the upper room. Yes. Here they come out and they did. And Peter preached his message. He come out and he preached to them. They started blaming it on wine, that they was drunk on wine and, and this and that. But Peter told them that this was that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that in the last days he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. This was what was happening right there at that time. It's come the outpouring of the Spirit of God. The, First day of the church, Brother Larry. Here is the anniversary of the church when we began. We. This ain't something happened back then. Okay? Just because we got away from it, on up through the years, and now it's being taught, don't mean that it changed. It's us. Amen. Right here we are, church. How many believe we're right here in Acts? I believe we're right here in Acts tonight because this is where we started out at. This is us tonight. Now listen. When he, when he told them this... The Bible says, 
Therefore, it says verse 36. It says, therefore, let all, chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, all, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this, this that Je same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, who was listening here? It was all the devout men from every nation. Yeah. They was doing what Jesus commanded them to do. Amen. They were standing and they were proclaiming what Jesus said in Matthew 28, Mark 16, and Luke 24. At the end of each one, they was proclaiming, they was doing the commandment right here that He told them to do. It says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. I pray somebody hears this tonight. Come on. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Every question that is asked from a lost person when they come to know Christ, they, what shall I do? What do I need to do? I need to be saved. So what do I need to do now? And Peter... Same answer we ought to give everybody that asked us. Amen. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now what's remission mean? Forgiveness. So this right here, we're getting to that. It's right here. Forgiveness of sins. He's teaching us right here how to be forgiven of our sins. There's only one way. There's, there's not, no other way in the Scriptures that you'll find that forgiveness of sin is being done but by the name of Jesus in water baptism. Amen. After you repent it. Repent and baptism goes the same way. You can baptize and be a wet sinner or you can repent and be a wet sinner. Whatever you want to do. But it's, you've got to have them both. He said, repent and be baptized. Every, don't worry about the Holy Ghost right now. Just stop your mind flowing about the Holy Ghost. All right? That's, that, that cunt. Listen, it'll come. But I'm talking about this foundation right here. We're going to get on in and you're going to see how it all worked together. All right? But he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission. That's forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Preacher, I want my kids to have it. Listen to this. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this onward generation. How are we going to be saved from this onward generation? Listen, don't get comfortable in Trump. Don't get comfortable in the government, in your job, in what you're doing. You best, listen, he said, save yourself from this onward. Oh, preacher, you're talking about 2,000 years ago. No, he said, this is that. This is that. Today is the day of salvation. 2,000 years ago, today is the day of salvation. It didn't change and it ain't going to change. You must come today to the feet of Jesus. You need to come today and learn of Him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, it says, And then, that, then they that gladly received His word, this is going to be received gladly, were baptized in the, the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Amen. Added to the church that day. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine yes. and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Listen, this is your foundation, church. This is where you're going. This is how you start out. I don't care what they're telling you. Okay? I'm going to give you this. Around between 200 A, I'm going to say 250 AD to 350 AD in that time. Do you know who come up and ordered you to be baptized in the name of in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost by the titles? It was the Roman Catholic Church. Constantine Noble. 
made a decree, made a law that this was, he took, he didn't become a Christian, but said he's a Christian and laid all these things out for us to do, Brother Larry. Laid all this out for the Christians. He made the law for the Christians. We're not bound, church. We're not up. We're under the authority of Jesus Christ. And he's been mixing things all the way through. And the revelations calls them the whore, church. That's who the whore is in revelations. If you read revelations and begin to wonder who the whore is, it's the Roman Catholic Church, Brother Larry. That's who it is. It's time to stand out on this stuff and tell people how they've been deceived and what's going on today. You went in history and found that. History's the only way I found them baptizing in the titles. I found Jesus' name baptism in the Word of God. That's the only place you can stand your foot is in an encyclopedia somewhere. I stand in mine in the King James Version Bible. But you go right on down through. You read the rest of your versions too. You go to Acts 2. And you look and see what they say. They can't change that. Praise be to God. They got the authority. When they lay that pen to that made up Bible, it still says for the remission of sins or for the forgiveness of sins. It all says it the same way. They can't even change it. The Holy Ghost won't let them. It's the truth. It is. But listen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But that's how your doctrine was changed. We're to obey the apostles' doctrine. To follow them. Jesus prayed for them. And he prayed for us. That is going to obey and know and teach the apostles' doctrine. He prayed for us. Why? Because it wasn't going to be an easy way. You're looking for an easy way to get to heaven, buddy. You're looking at the wrong boat. Amen. You're looking at the wrong boat. Because it's an everyday Mind warfare. Amen. I ain't saying you got to cut this one, punch out. When I'm talking about in the heart, and now the day that we're living in, this doctrine has flooded, and it comes against us every day, Amen. every day. Amen. How many of you got Facebook and you can put anything on about Jesus? Somebody ain't got something negative. That's right. It's the truth. They go straight to Romans and everything. But listen, we're gonna get the Romans here too. I want you to go to Acts. That right there was the Jews. Now go to Acts chapter 8. Let's go on through this. Acts chapter 8. Starting at verse 14. I'm telling you if you're concerned tonight. You know age ain't got nothing. I got a baby laying out there in the graveyard. Death didn't care to take her. Didn't care a bit. We think we got a lot of years ahead of us. Yours might end tonight. I ain't trying to scare you. I'm just telling you the God's honest truth. You better listen. 8 and 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard this, that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Who was the, what name was they baptized in? Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It was done there. What happened? They received the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Now, I didn't want to. I want this name to, to do, but you're going to see how the Holy Ghost mixes in, and you're going to understand that this is important tonight. That the Holy Ghost is it, it's coming if you're sincere and you do this God's way. Uh -huh. It's there. Or some even in here, you're going to see red that they received it before they got baptized. Just slip. Follow me right along. Go right on to Acts ten. And 44. I ain't a very good speaker in big words or nothing like that. But I can read you the word. Amen. Acts 10 and 44. Where do we come in at, preacher? Are we Gentiles? Yes. I'm a Gentile. <laughs> Look over somebody and say, I'm a Gentile. I'm a Gentile. All right. 
Acts 10 and 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as come with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here they received the Holy Ghost. Yes. What did they do first? Though they heard the word, didn't they? Yes. And they received the Holy Ghost. It says, For they heard them speak with tongues, and they magnified God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid th that these should not be back that should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them. What did he do? Commanded. commanded. What did Jesus do to him? Commanded him. So whatever he commands us, I gotta command you. They got this is a commandment upon all of our lives. All of our lives. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jesus. Prayed they him to tarry certain days. They want him to hang around. They want him to hang around a while. Man, they got filled. They got sealed, and they were ready. Amen. Why? Because he came with the Word. Amen. The Word will make you free. Amen. It'll make you free tonight. Go on. Amen. Is it helping anybody? Is anybody getting any help out of this to know that how you need to start out? Come on. How you need to get it tonight? Listen. I right, praise the Lord. Go to Acts 19 and 1. It says, and it came to pass that while Paulus was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? See, this is when we come to the repentance altar. Our, our Roman Catholic teaching, I'm going to put it like that. That's where it pricks the heart hardest. Teaches us that we get it all. Uh -huh. We receive the Holy Ghost. We receive forgiveness. They'll even teach to a point in some of our denominations that you don't even need to be baptized. Okay? No. This is what they teach. They have destroyed. They tried to destroy the gospel, but you can't kill the gospel. Okay. Somebody, some dumb old country boys will stand up with it. That's right. And proclaim it and just tell it straight out. Come on. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Does anybody remember where John was? He's in the Jordan. What was he doing? Submerging in, submerging in water, wasn't he? He was baptized there in the Jordan. Why? Because it had what? Much water. That's why he was there. Everybody wants to blame it on the spiritual thing. But you got to have both. So, and then said Paul, then said Paul, John, barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto people that they should believe on him, listen, uh -huh. which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When they heard this, what did they do? They changed. They was under John's baptism. What you under ain't good enough. Amen. It ain't good enough. If the name of Jesus ain't been called over you in Jesus' name baptism, the sins is hooked to your belt loop and you're dragging them around everywhere. They've not been knocked off. Amen. That's what I've learned in this study. How true this is in this study. And how we ought to be more concerned for the people when we talk to them. Are you born again? Are you born again? That's the question that we should be asking. And then further on, how are you born again? If you don't know how you're born again, you more than likely ain't born again. Because it's plain in the Bible how you're born again. I'm telling you right now how you're born again. It is. The Roman Catholics and all of them say it's a mystery. It's just a great mystery that nobody's to understand this. 
But I believe Jesus said he wouldn't hide nothing from us, didn't he? That's right. Said he wouldn't hide We're his friends. Yeah. We're right. his friends. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did I read all of him? I'm going to make sure here. I ain't going to miss nothing. No podly. Amen. Now go. All right. We've got a question on how was Paul baptized? Everybody wants to go to Romans and speak out, you know, just believe, speak, and be some. We're going to go to all this. To just confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall be saved. All that, everybody just wants to say, that's all you got to do. All you got to do. That's what they're telling us, Brother Jeff. But listen here, how was Paul baptized? Go to Acts 9 and 18. Come on. And then you're going to hear this out of Paul's very mouth. In this chapter, Paul was struck down on the road to Damascus. He was going to go kill a bunch of Christians and bound them and bring them back. All right? This is what Paul was on the road to do. But Paul, there's a light shone before Paul and struck him to the ground. And there were scales come upon his eyes. See, I'm just giving you a little bit of this. But during all this, Ananias come to Paul. And I'm going to, it's going to read you this on over an Acts. But here's what, here's what Paul, listen. It says, and immediately there fell from his eyes. This is the account that was taken. As it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. All right, they don't prove Paul was baptized in Jesus' name. All right, go to Acts 22. Come on. Acts 22 and 16. If you want to know, it's in there. Amen. Twenty-two and sixteen, and now, why tarryest thou? This is what Paul's telling now. This is what happened to him, and Ananias saying these things to him. It says, and now, why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. Ananias instructed him. This was Paul telling the story. So, how was Paul baptized? In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Jesus Amen. is the Lord's name. We've already went through that. Amen. So there's your 12th apostle. Born out of due season. Amen. If you'll have it that way. Amen. But there's your 12th apostle. So here we got them all baptized in the same way. Paul was baptized that way. All right, go to John 3 and 5. This is the account where Nicodemus come to Jesus at night. He was a ruler of the Jews. And it says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man... Okay, I'm going to start here. Jesus answered. It says, The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi. We're going to start up here in two. Sometimes you just can't go. You've got to explain it a little bit. It says, Said unto him, Rabbi, We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, which is truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter in to the kingdom of God. How you got to be born again? Water. Of the Spirit and of the water. Here you got your spiritual baptism. You got your water baptism. Uh -huh. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How did the Holy Ghost say He's going to come? In what name? Jesus' name. So you're going to be baptized in Jesus' name by the Spirit and by the water. Praise the Lord. 
All right, go to Romans 6. Romans 6, 3 and 4. Why is baptism important in Jesus' name? Listen. Romans 6, 3 and 4. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. All right, go to Romans chapter 7, verse 1. There's only one way. Paul's going to explain here about the one way to be loosed from the law. Listen here. It says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak unto them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another, she is to be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another. Listen to this. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. You want to be released from the law? If you ain't, I'll say it after this. That ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that should bring forth fruit unto God. Who was raised from the dead? Jesus. Jesus. Go back to chapter 6, verse 3. It says, Know ye not that so many as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. Amen. How do we put off the old law from our life? He spoke it a while ago. This is the only way to receive the blood of Jesus Christ is through Jesus' name, baptism. Why? Because the New Testament couldn't be, couldn't be, couldn't even start, couldn't even happen until the death of the testator. And then when he died, we was freed from the old covenant, and now we're raised in the newness of life. And when that baptism happens, Brother Sam, you are raised in the newness of life, that you're no longer under the old covenant. You're raised in the newness of life, buried with Him in baptism. You must be. you got to get rid of that old stuff. This old stuff can't hang around. It ain't going to be. It's in the newness of life. I'm talking, you know, we, we do that. But this old covenant and stuff that happens. But you got everything that comes new in your life. Listen, when you get pricked in your heart like Sissy said tonight, you've got to take and throw those things aside. You've got to take and lay aside every weight and these sins so easily besets you. You've got to be on, on fire for God. On the on, Listen, putting on the armor of God to walk in the way and the likeness of Him that He will be satisfied with us and not living just any old lifestyle you do. You know what living for God is? It's a lifestyle change. It changes your lifestyle. Yes. It really does. It changes the way you talk to people, the way you speak, the way you pre teach, your, teach your children, the way you speak to your spouse. It will change your life. It is a lifestyle change. You'll no longer be the same man. You'll lay away all those things that you once loved. You'll hate them and you'll love the things that you hated tonight. Yes. Praise be to God. I'm telling you church, if we just take tonight and come to Jesus in the way that he asked us to be and do, we will live a life of holiness and pureness that will be accepted on that day. But we got to come this way. Yes. Amen. You know, this ain't liked very much. But listen, go to Peter 3 and 21. First Peter. Let's go right on. Let's show you something. Keep your mind on your soul. Keep it off everybody else's. Amen. 3 and 21. Amen. 3 and 21, like this. It says, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. 
Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's another one. That by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Listen, there's something about going under it. And in the name of Jesus, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. You have got, listen, there's no other way Amen. to be saved. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's only one way tonight. And you've got to get started this way. Amen. We've been fooled long enough. We've been led wrong long enough. We've got to get started out right if we're going to end right. I don't want nobody to go to hell. I don't. And you're under, listen, you know people just takes going to church lightly. You know this is a dangerous place to be. Yes. Come on. It, this, is, this is more dangerous than being over in Afghanistan or wherever they're fighting tonight. There's something clicked on the wife's phone when we got out there. Something they, they had something they, that Trump's in over there and they're getting ready to do something to five or fifteen of them things over there with them drones or whatever. But you're in the, you listen, you're in a more dangerous place than that tonight. Because when truth falls upon the ears and you deny it, you know one thing that you're responsible for in this life? My kids, preacher. Your soul. Your soul. You have a soul that is begging to go to heaven. And you are responsible for the answer that you're giving that soul. That's it. I'm telling you, this is important. This is nothing to be laughed at. Go to Colossians 2 and 11. <coughs> Colossians 2 and 11. It says, in, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with Him in baptism, wherein ye also are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised Him from the dead. There's another one. You're right. Baptism. It's the New Testament way. There ain't no way around it. You can't stop it. Go right on. Listen, go to Galatians 3 and 27. Galatians 3 and 27. As for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You've been baptized into this thing. So reason when you hear Brother Butch, he says you're born into this. You don't just join a church to get in this. You are born into it. He said you must be born again of the Spirit and of the water. Amen. You've got to. There's no other way around it. 1 Corinthians 6. Starting at verse 9. <coughs> verse Corinthians 6 and verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? But it says, Be not deceived. They're letting fornicators in today. It says, Neither fornicators. They're letting adulterers in today. He said, neither, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, that is homosexuals, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. How are you washed? Baptism. But ye are sanctified. Sanctified is what? Set apart. But 
but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. There's water baptism, there's a spiritual baptism. Wrapped up right there in that verse. Right there. That you must have both the Spirit and the water. Justified is declared righteous. You're declared righteous by this. I know our righteousness is filthy rags, but this is the only way we're declared righteous. This is the only one way. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Two and nine. It says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It also tells us in another place, it says, Anything you do in word and deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Listen, what's it do? It gives glory to God the Father. That's how, That's the only way you're going, He's going to receive glory is if we do everything that we do in the name of Jesus. You'll pray over your food in Jesus' name. You, you'll end every prayer that you pray, you'll say, in Jesus' name. But why not be baptized in Jesus' name? Amen. We're ashamed of Him when we go to the water hole. Why? Because the majority, did you hear this? The majority today has got people scared, has gave them a fear. There's this many goes this way. Why do I have to go where just a few is? Because just a few found it in the Word and the majority found it in history. Amen. Do you understand? Did you hear that tonight? Yes. Your majority has found it somewhere, somewhere else besides in the Word of God. <laughs> you have got to get over onto the straight that they was talking about tonight. And that straight way is by the name of Jesus Christ. He said the only way to the Father is through and by Jesus. He said me. So how else are we going to get to where we're going if we deny this word that you've heard here tonight? How are we going to get there? But I got one more. One more. Ephesians 3 and 15. Fourteen. I'm gonna start at fourteen. It says, "For this cause, look at this." Ephesians three and fourteen. It says, "For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named." Amen. We must hold His name. Yes. We must bear His name. As a husband and wife getting married, the wife takes the man's name. If she don't take the man's name, she don't get the man's inheritance when he dies. You've got to take, I know the laws is this now, and I know the laws is that now, but we're not of those laws. We're of, we're in a new government church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We still live, we still live the old path. We still believe, praise be to God, it's one man and one woman. That's we right. still believe that there's one way. Right. We don't, you know what Methodist I was in? There's just a big thing. My wife sent me there. They split up. Why? There's about half of them started going for the homosexuality and getting this thing in them. And I took and faced them a long time ago, sitting right in that little Methodist church and asked them about this. And they lied to me and said it wasn't happening. But it come to light. You can't hide nothing and do it in darkness and not come to light. The denominations out here is accepting this stuff and bringing it into the churches little by little. And they're taking and fooling your mind and risking. And the rest in the scriptures and being in the bone that you'll believe a line be damned tonight. It's possible. Listen, tonight. you're sitting in dangerous ground tonight if you deny the word that's fell upon your ears, if you deny the Lord Jesus Christ and in His way, sin still sin. It's not acceptable in the house of God. It's not acceptable to you down Walmart. It's not acceptable to you in your own bedroom. If it's wrong, it's unacceptable to you today in the eyes of God. Sin, sin. That's the way it 
is tonight. You cannot live an unrighteous. How are you? But I'm a good person, preacher. How are you made righteous? Through by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've explained how to receive it tonight. There's only one way. And when you stand before Him without that one way in your life, you know what you're going to be called? Lost. You're going to be called hellbound. You're going to be called gone. You're going to be called everlasting fire. You're going to be called fire and brimstone. You're going to be called wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is what you're going to be called. It's a real place tonight. It's for real tonight. Hell is. We don't say it enough, but it's a real place still yet. And I pray be to God. I don't want to fear my God, but I don't want to go to that place called hell. That's a place, praise be to God. If I ain't obedient to the word of God, even in my Christian walk, I'm going to hit that You've got to be obedient. The pastor says it all the time. His daddy's been in this for over 40 years. But if he turned around and walked away from God right now, he'd split hell wide open. It ain't due to good parents. It ain't due to the things that you've done. It's what he done on the cross of Calvary. that we are in the right way and it's in the Jesus way. Amen. So now I go tell your friends, your loved ones that you love so dearly that we've been patting on the back for years. Yes. Amen. Been patting them on the back, Jeff. They're going to get some word. Why? Because this is important. How important is it? It's called life or death. It's called heaven or hell. It is. Come on. You can take it. Either you can have it or you don't. Listen. You need to do this. What the Word of God says. Then what else does the Word of God? It'll teach you how to dress. Teach you how to talk. Teach you where to go. Teach you where not to go. Teach you what to listen to and what not listen to. Teach you how to whip him little babies. Teach you how to raise them up in the way they should go. That way when they get older they won't depart from it. This word right here has got everything in it that you need. It'll teach you how to be a husband. It'll teach you how to be a wife. It'll teach you how to be an employee at your job. It'll teach you how to be faithful in everything that you do. You remember Joseph in the Bible church? Everything he laid his hand to prosper. Why? Because he found favor in the eyes of God. There's one way to find favor. In the eyes of God. And that's being obedient unto his word. Amen. Amen. Come on. It's the truth. If we ain't, we're going to can't be. We're going to come up short. And I ain't coming up short. I ain't coming up short. I'm going to live right. I'm going to live holy. And I'm going to do it. Listen. Live, if it's in there, it's got to come out here. And if we've already been pricked in our hearts by something the Word has give us, or by something, listen, there's probably some stuff that I just don't do and I don't even say it in the Word, but the Lord. I feel that the Lord ain't pleased with it, Brother Larry. Amen. I just feel that he ain't pleased with it. Why? Because I feel that it's unrighteousness. And he said all unrighteousness is sin. So we must live holy and acceptable unto God. I love you. Who cares if you get the nickname holier than thou? Amen. I want to be holy, don't you? I want to be holy. He's a good God tonight. Church, I love you. And I hope I helped you some way. I really do. And listen, if you ain't never been baptized in Jesus' name, and you've repented, Listen, if you, there's lots of people out there. I believe was sincere, Brother Larry, when they come to the altar. Yeah. They were sincere. They went and got baptized in the titles. But tonight, listen, you got a chance to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. you got a chance to be forgiven of your sins. Listen, if that ain't enough proof, if that ain't enough proof, I don't know what else to do for you. Amen. I don't know what else to do for you. Don't believe this lie and be damned. You better believe the Word of God. What man has come up with will take you to hell. But if you want to be baptized tonight in the name of Jesus, there's a water hole right down here that will get all muddy. We'll get all muddy in the name of Jesus. Sister Rachel's got a bathtub over there. We'll fill her plumb up and baptize you in the name of Jesus. It don't matter to me. I just believe in going under in the name of Jesus because that's what the Bible's pleased with. That's what my God is pleased with tonight. I love you. I love you. I love you and I appreciate you. This has been on my heart and I've been fighting this and I've just been I've been wanting answers. And I've just been studying. All you got to do is study it. He'll bring it out. He'll bring it out to you. 
And he'll put it. That probably ain't all of it. There's probably some stuff you may say in your mind that I didn't say, or he said it in his mind, or he did. There, there's lots more. But you got to take and eat this word. Eat all of it. Listen, this is what you got to go by. You ain't got nothing else. Amen. Ain't got nothing else. You got to do it. The Holy Bible. Listen, you got to do it. Don't do it any other way besides Jesus. Amen. Some people say that means basics and instructions before leaving earth. That's a good one, ain't it? I believe it is tonight. Give the Lord a hand clap, church.